morning, folks. It's great to see you all on this wonderful sunny summer mo morning. And we want to give you a warm welcome to this, our Estuary Elim online church service. Now, it doesn't matter if this is your first time with us. In fact, if it is your first time with us, it's great to see you. But it doesn't matter if it's first time or whether you're with us every week or you're watching us on Facebook or you're going to be watching us on, on YouTube later. We just consider you to be a part of our church family. Now, our purpose today is to come together to worship God and just experience church together. Now, one of the amazing things about our coming together to worship God is expressed ever so well by C.S. Lewis. Now, you know who C.S. Lewis is. He's the guy who wrote the Narnia Chronicles, you know, the lion, the witch and the wardrobe. And he said this. In the process of being worshipped, God communicates his presence to men. Let me just say that again. In the process of being worshipped, God communicates his presence to men. Now, I don't, don't know about you, but I think that's amazing. As we intentionally come together to bless God and to worship him this morning, he intentionally blesses us with his presence. James in James chapter four and verse eight tells us this, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought of it like that before, but that's what we're about this morning, getting close to God. And as we do, like any good father enjoys being close to his children, our Father God enjoys being close to you and I, and he enjoys our enjoyment of him. Now, I say that might come as a surprise to you, that God would enjoy your presence, but he does. Just as in the, the prodigal son, remember the story of the prodigal son goes off and he messes up his life and then he's on his way back. And uh, the, the father spots him coming, he's coming down the road. And rather than waiting for the son to get to him, the father tears down the road to meet him. Now that's the father heart of God. And he wants us in the same way to come to him this morning. And as we make an intentional effort to draw near to God together, I want you to know he's tearing down the road, as it were, to draw near to you and to me. The prodigal son was able to enjoy uh, not only forgiveness, but to, to come into his father's presence. And our prayer is that as we draw near to worship him together this Sunday morning, that each of us will indeed encounter the father heart of God and just enjoy his presence. Now, we've got a, a great morning lined up ahead of us. So first of all, let's just open in prayer, shall we? <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for bringing us together this morning from so many different backgrounds and places. And we want to tell you that we really do want to draw near to you this morning. We want to bless you, Lord. We want to thank you, Jesus, for the forgiveness that you've made freely available to us through your death on the cross. And just to say that we are humbled by the thought that we could ever, ever bring joy to your heart. And we just ask that as we focus our hearts on you, that whatever might be going off in our own lives, whatever might be weighing us down right now, that we will find your help and strength and just enjoy your presence. And so we still ourselves before you yet again. We position ourselves to hear and receive from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to what Simon's got to say uh, a little later on. But now it's my job to introduce the kids slot. Now, it's not the magical minister this week. He had to have a, an eye operation, so he was a little bit indisposed. But this week, it's a video about what kids say about the Bible and more specifically, what kids say about Jesus. So let's watch that, shall we? Angels 
helpless and they're in our hearts. The angels are right here and Jesus is in the middle. Where does Jesus live? Right there. Right where? Right there. On the floor? Uh huh. Some of the Ten Commandments are? Do not punch, do not lie, do not kick, do not spit. What do you think God looks like? Mmm, so tall. Colin, can you explain sanctification? And what does God do all day? She, she stays in our hearts all day. How old is God? 100. Can you tell me how old do you think God is? Three. <laughs> Why did they eat an apple? Because they wanted to eat something to eat. How many commandments are in the Ten Commandments? How many numbers? Uh -huh. <laughs> do you know what happened to Adam and Eve? They ate a snake. <laughs> you want to tell me the story of Samson? He died. Somebody cut his hair and he, he wasn't strong anymore. Why did his hair give him strength? Because he was big like a grown up. How did uh, Moses give the Ten Commandments? He worked up a really tall island. I have a toy beat and I have a toy bell. Is that story in the Bible? Yeah. What book of the Bible is, it, is that story in? Um, a princess one. Do you know the story about Adam and Eve? Uh -huh. They died. Because they were super, 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 super old. <laughs> <laughs>
and to receive all the compliments about how wonderful the chocolate cake tasted before revealing dramatically that a key ingredient was beetroot. This time, I was very careful to follow the associated description with the image of the finished product. And I remember going to the supermarket to source the ingredients and to cook without any adult supervision, which may have been where I went wrong. In the evening, we had some friends round, and the moment for the cake reveal had begun. I was gratified by the oohs and the ahs as our friends saw my masterpiece. I cut the cake and offered it around. I saw that, however, there was an initial positive reaction, but after that it quickly turned to confusion in the faces of my friends. And as I bit into the slice of my cake, I realised suddenly that when using beetroot, the recipe probably meant baked rather than pickled. My delicious cake tasted like vinegar. So why did I share these two accounts? Well, I love telling stories, and these are a couple that I have in my repertoire around the theme of cooking and my cooking abilities, stories that I have told many times over the years. However, if you just rely on these stories for an insight into my ability as a cook, you may not get an accurate picture. The truth is, actually I'm okay as a cook. I don't do it very much. Karen is way better than me, but I took a cookery class at college and I can follow a recipe, honestly. And if I say so myself, my chocolate pear tart tatin is pretty good. Um, it is a bit of a rare and endangered species. The stories that I tell, and at times perhaps even believe, don't really reflect the truth of who I am. Over the last couple of months, we've been looking together at the why, the who, the what, and the how of ourselves and our place in the church as we move forward into this new season together. We've been looking at the vision that we believe God has given us, how we see ourselves and how we see his church, in effect, our story. Let's remind ourselves of our story so far, our purpose, our values, our mission. This year, our theme within Estuary Ealing Church is Significant Seasons. This theme was chosen as we believe that we are in a significant new season for the world, our nation, our communities, and for us as a local church. And one of the key areas that we believe God has been reminding us is that we are one church. Our new logo reflects this, Estuary Elim Church, one church, many people. And just as Elim, as a movement is part of the wider church, our four locations, Ashendon, Rayleigh, Southend and online are expressions of one church, Estuary Elim. We're not Ashendon Elim, Rayleigh Elim, Southend Elim and online church. We are one church, part of one body and expressed in our four locations. We also have one purpose. Paul, an early church leader, nailed it with this description of how we need to function as a church. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship? together in the spirit. Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. We, the Estuary Church, stand together with one spirit and purpose. We belong to each other and united we work together sharing the good news of Jesus through our lives and our actions. Now, at this point in our story, I think we need to recognise that we're not the first to go this way. With the exception of our online church, our fellowships at Southend, Rayleigh and Ashendon have existed before all of us were born. We don't have time to look at all of our three historic fellowships, but let's take Ashendon as an example. In 1924, the Vincents, a young married couple in their early 20s and full of the Holy Spirit and faith, had the vision to share the gospel, God's great news, in this part of South East Essex. 
an ex-army Nissen hut, I think from the First World War, became the premises for the church. And it was at the rear of the present site on the corner of Ashenden Road and Clifton Road. That's a reference for the locals. Pastor Vincent was a very busy man, holding down the job of a local milkman, as well as serving God in his pastoral role. His job was not always an easy one because a lively, spirit-filled Pentecostal church didn't go down well with everyone in the small village as it was then. Initially, the church, which was Pentecostal, was called Bethel. Eventually, it joined the Elim movement in Essex several years later. But over the years, the church continued to thrive and had several different ministers, including George Kingston, and then Pastor Bill West, way back, I think, in 1945. We think that the, the new brick-built uh, building uh, was built in 1963, uh, only one third of the size it is today. Pastor Alan Cox was leading the church at the time, but in 1966, Pastor Cliff Stockdale, who's known to some of the current congregation, took over the work for three months and stayed for nearly 30 years. When the first building extension was finished in 1980, Pastor David Redbond became an assistant pastor and for many years now he's been our senior pastor. For almost 100 years we have been in this area, holding the story of God's great news for our area and beyond. The way we dress, our music, our songs, the way we do things may have changed, but our story is the same now as it was then. Our purpose is unchanged. Our purpose then, as it is now, is connecting God's compassion through the church with the community. So what does this actually mean? It means to be known as a people who love God, who love each other and love the community where God has placed us. To grow as followers of Jesus and use the gifts he's given to be a blessing to those around us. To connect others to a growing relationship in Jesus. Life in all its fullness. And that's who we are and how we want to be. Compassion then is a love that moves us to action. I'll say that again, it's quite important. Compassion is a love that moves us to action. We as followers of Jesus, as members of the Estuary Elim Church, we're called to compassion for each other, yes, but also for us to allow God to move our hearts with his compassion beyond where we gather to the community where he's placed us. Finally, in previous talks, we looked at our values, the who we are, and this is easy to summarise as Paul, an early church leader, sets it out really well for us. Our values, how we act, who we are, what we say and what we do, how we talk to our kids, our parents, our colleagues, our friends, those who hate us, those who we disagree with, those we love. In all of our engagements, all of our encounters, this is what Paul said, we are to have the same attitude as Jesus. Well, we are to have the same attitude as Jesus. It's so simple, yet so challenging. And if you think about it, it's not all that surprising. The clue is in our name. Christians, it's literally little Christs or little Jesuses. To be a Christian is not only to take on the name of Christ, which is the Greek word for Jesus, but actually to allow God to work through us so that even our attitudes are changed to be like Jesus, God's son. And what was Jesus' attitude? A compassion rooted in genuine selfless love expressed in sacrificial servant-hearted action. In other words, as Jesus follows us together, how we work is key, with one mind and purpose, as we've already seen, to love each other deeply and to have hearts that are tender and compassionate. I'd like us to take a moment to reflect and to pray on what we've heard so far. 
In a moment, we're going to spend just 90 seconds in prayer. Let's use the following questions to guide us in our prayers. Firstly, what is your story? What stories do you tell others about your life? Do they reflect how God sees you? Secondly, what is our story together? As someone connected to the Estuary Elim Church, what does it mean for you to connect God's compassion through the church with the community? What would it look like in your life to be a blessing to others? We will all be on mute and we have 90 seconds. Let's pray. So we've looked at our purpose, a short summary of what we're about and our vision, where we want to get to and who we are. But how do we get there in this new season where God's placed us here at Ashenden, Rayleigh, Southend and online? In practical terms, we see this expressed in four ways. How we grow, how we serve, how we worship and being a church that is ascending church. But today, I want us to focus on the first part and what it means to be a growing church. I started this talk reflecting on a couple of stories about my cooking abilities. And as you heard, the stories that I like to tell about these cooking disasters don't actually reflect the true account of my abilities, albeit limited as a cook. And for the best part of a century, our vision here at Estuary Elim has been to connect the community where God has placed us with the God who loves them through the shared story of how he's changed our lives and how he wants to do the same for us all. It's important to go back to our why, isn't it? Before we examine the how. So why then? Is this such a key part of our story? This mission to share God's story? We're here because together, we have the best message ever for our friends, our families, our community. We have experienced the encouragement, comfort and ongoing transformation that Jesus gives life as it's meant to be lived in all its wonderful fullness, a life lived with hope, peace and purpose. So our mission is to connect God's compassion through the church with the community. We have good news. We have in fact the best news story ever of God's compassion in action. The fact that we can have a new start, a living relationship with God the Father. We can be forgiven of all the mess in our lives. We can be rescued from eternity of life separated from God. We can know the peace, comfort, hope and purpose of God in our lives. This great news of life in all its wonderful fullness is something that we want others to take hold of and to grow with us as we walk this journey together. We want our church to represent the community we're part of, the balance of ages, genders, ethnicity. The good news is good news for all. Our buildings, 
they will change. Our meetings, they will change. Our songs, they will change. The way we do church may change, but the good news, the good news story never changes. Our job is to work together as men, women, young people transformed by Jesus, telling the story of God's good news through how we live, not just what we say. To hold tightly to God, but lightly to anything that gets in the way of someone else seeing clearly this good news story for themselves. That's our mission, past, present and future. Before I close this service, we will have a short time of reflection as we listen to a modern version of an old hymn. The words in the hymn remind us of the good news, the old, old story, but the life-changing true story that can transform our lives and together as we serve him, the lives of those in our families and communities. Let's listen to Tell Me The Old Old Story. This is a new version by Bradley Dias. As we listen to this song, let's take the opportunity to reflect on what it is God may be saying to us. This song talks about the story of God's rescue plan for us, his incredible love for us. The tune has changed, but the story remains the same. God bless. You are perfect in all of your ways. Isn't it wonderful that we've got such a marvellous God that we can trust him with everything. Again, it's great to have been able to share with you this morning and I hope that you've been blessed. Um, I'd love to try Simon's pizza souffle. I'm not so sure on the chocolate beetroot cake with the vinegar in it, but uh, you know. And wasn't it good to see some of those pictures from uh, from years ago? I thought he was going to tell us that uh, David had been the senior pastor for 100 years, but he didn't quite get there. But uh, <clears throat> in a moment, we'll be um, bringing our service to a close. But before we do that, there's just one or two things that I need to mention. Don't forget, you can, if you want to, you can watch us again on Facebook or YouTube and uh, you know later on you can you can do that and indeed there are um thought for the day on a tuesday and a, and a thursday you can tune into that and there are many other resources on our on our web page that you might care to, to look at and if you're a visitor please make yourself known to us we'd love to meet you and love to let you know whatever else is is going to be happening so uh, let's just pray together shall we Father God, we thank you for your presence and for your word. We thank you that we as a church can experience the unity that only the Holy Spirit can bring us. And we just ask, as Simon has been talking about, that you will cause us to be filled with your compassion, filled with your love uh, as we reach out to others, Lord, so that we can be more like Jesus so that we can be a blessing to those around us and to our, our community. Thank you, Lord. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show his favour to you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.